We are back. It's another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And on today's episode, it's more of the same. Hot fantasy takes and all of the top news from around the NHL that you need to know. We're breaking it all down on Thursday's episode. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You heard the music, and you know what time it is. It's time for your source for fantasy hockey news. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast with Steel and Flip. We are here Monday through Friday for all of you fantasy fanatics to make sure that you are up to date on the world of fantasy hockey. And, of course, we also have big-time bets every single episode to try and put a little money in that pocket. Thank you for making us your first listen every single episode day steel and i would not be here if it wasn't for all of the listeners watchers subscribers and we really appreciate every single one of y'all i hope (laughs) like a lot of you out there you're sitting pretty in your fantasy leagues right now and on today's episode we're doing a little nhl league-wide roundup the washington capitals are eliminated Ryan O'Reilly is returning from injury. Steele has a couple of hot takes on this Calgary Flames situation, one of the biggest disappointments in the NHL this season. And, of course, we got big-time bets and everything in between. So, Steele, I want to turn it over to you because as much as we're going to get to this Calgary Flames situation, we're going to actually talk about how good Marc-Andre Fleury's career has been. But let me get to the Washington Capitals, eliminated Missing the playoffs for the first time since 2014. What's your take on this situation in Washington? Yeah, to me, it's honestly, I think this feels like a lot for the same uh, for a lot of people and fans out there of the Capitals Mm, and just mm, hockey mm. in general, that this is pretty much the end of an era. And if you look at it from the whole entire of the Eastern Conference standings, we might potentially see the postseason without both Alex Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby. And if it does end up that way, then it pretty much officially is the end of an era for a lot of hockey fans out there because we've watched Sidney Crosby. We've watched Alex Ovechkin over the last decade and a half, always being in the playoffs, at least one of them, at least making a deep playoff run at that. And then even with Alex Ovechkin winning his only Stanley cup back in 2018, what a special moment that was for him. And uh, even Crosby with the three Stanley Cup rings that he has over the span of his career. So it, yeah. to me, it's the end of an era. It's, it's, it's honestly it a sad thing. Uh, I know that I know the Pittsburgh Penguins have not been mathematically eliminated. They're still in the race. They're what? Oh, yeah. Just what, they're just one point back. But for Alex yeah. Ovechkin, uh, I think I think I don't think he actually wins another Stanley Cup in, in, mm. in his career. I think mm. it is the end of an era uh, for Alex Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals. You know, they've gone through a bunch of goalies over the seasons. The three guys that have really stuck it out, Alex Ovechkin, Nicholas Backstrom, and John Carlson being the remaining three for so many years now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Yeah. it's obviously sad, but this is also a beautiful thing as well because you get to see a bunch of new teams in the postseason that we haven't really seen uh, consecutively. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch Mm -hmm. of teams on the come up as well. The, The Washington Capitals have had their time. They've won the Stanley Cup, but there's a few more teams uh, over the next decade that I'm looking at uh, to have a bright future. Injuries to key players over key moments of the season, including right from the jump with Tom Wilson. Then you have John Carlson's scary skull fracture injury. I was thinking about this situation, Steele. Like, if you or I were playing alongside John Carlson and your boy, the guy who's been the anchor of that blue line, goes down in a fashion like that, I can't even imagine what that would do to the psyche of the players around him, especially on that blue line core. And then there's some moves made at the deadline. Like I said, the inconsistencies, the injuries to key players. I hate to say we told you so, but both Steele and I said this, and I think, let me run the tape back about January. You and I said, uh, the right now the Caps kept winning. They kept yeah. finding ways, a.k.a. Alex Ovechkin usually unpredictable ways of winning games and now it's just run the tapes run short on them this is only the i hold on let me bring this back because you know me with the numbers just the fourth (laughs) time since ovechkin's entered the league yeah just the fourth time so you know this might light a fire and this is where i want to go with this 
for a question for you. Before we head on to O'Reilly, before we head on to the uh, Flames, before we head on to Big Time Bets, bah, 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 I need to know this. What does this mean for next season, Steel? Do they maybe sell a little bit of the farm? Maybe Connor McMichael in a pick. Maybe some of these younger players. Because, and I'll hit you with this, Free agents, unrestricted, Connor Sherry, Craig Smith, Connor Brown, Carl Haglin. There's not a mm-hmm. lot of maneuvering to do with this lineup, I don't think, right? The key pieces are here. Maybe you sell off a bit of the future. What do you think they do? Because you know Ovechkin's not going to settle for anything other than going for another Stanley yeah. Cup. I honestly don't think they have to quite uh, I, I honestly don't think they have to do that much, honestly, in the offseason. Okay. Like you said, they've dealt with a number of very rough injuries all season mm-hmm. long. I mm-hmm. think I think Darcy Kemper could have been a little bit better. Same as Charlie Lindgren. I know Lindgren went on that outrageous uh, win streak. Don't get me run. started on that. Uh, but no, but like I honestly believe that they honestly just fell short this season. I don't okay. think they're going to be the team over the next three to four years to, to mm-hmm. make a deep playoff run. But I don't. I'm not going to say that they can't make the postseason because they have the players, they have the young talent, and they've got the goalies as well. But they've struggled with injuries all year. Tom Wilson, John Carlson, Alex Ovechkin missed time with his father yes. passing. Connor Brown as well with a very season end- uh, season ending Tom injury. Wilson. Too. Tom Wilson. So they've struggled with injuries a lot like with other teams that have struggled with injuries as well. Uh-huh. L- uh-huh. Look at the Nashville Predators. They've struggled with injuries the last two months practically. And that's caused right. them to fall a little bit short of a playoff spot. Mm-hmm. Same could be said for um, a couple of the teams in the Eastern Conference. I know the Columbus Blue Jackets are not even close to it, but they could have been close if they didn't have as many injuries to Patrick Lyon, Zach Wierenski, Goldie Jenner issues as well, Boone Jenner. So uh, teams have struggled, and because of all those injuries, significant injuries, mm-hmm. Uh, for significant time is a, a lot of the reason why they're missing the playoffs. But to, I'm not going to say that they're out of it uh, or not going to make the playoffs next season. Yeah, it's just, I guess, maybe one of those questions that you know fans and listeners and Washington Cap supporters want to <laughs> know. Because yeah. I think it's one of those teams that are right there on that, you know, on that line of... Yeah, they're right there, completely- just missed out completely blow it up though and you can't because if we already know what Alex Ovechkin has said if he's there he is not part of a rebuild so yeah. they are going to make some moves and that's why some of these pieces like Dylan Strom you know the other peripheral pieces around that lineup even Evgeny Kuznetsov if they bring in an interesting piece in the in the offseason steal Washington's right at the top of my list of teams that I'm going to watch. Wow, we took this conversation a lot longer than I thought we would. So why don't we spend a break and we'll come right back talking about the Flames. And I know I want to hear what you have to say about that because looking at this matchup, and yes, we record early and Winnipeg and Calgary are playing tonight. This is going to get spicy here down the stretch and we are in the stretch. Only a few games left. We got big time bets. We got Ryan O'Reilly. We got a whole lot of other fantasy news coming up. But we got to talk about our friends at FanDuel. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The NBA playoffs are almost upon us, and it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because no cu- new customers get a no-sweat first bet for up to 1000 bucks. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't hit. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Steele and I are always going back and forth. And you can bet on everything from the money line to point scorers to threes drained. You know, Steele and I are competitive and we like betting on all kinds of degenerate things like the tip, who wins the first to 20, triple doubles, 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 and everything in between. Plus, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. I know Steele's been creeping around those same game parlays lately, so make sure you check him on Twitter for his picks. Don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet for up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to fanduel.com slash locked on, that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. So hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all the love, all the support that you show us every single day. We will get to Marc-Andre Fleury and the significant 
crazy mm. run that he has been going on in the postseason. Ryan yep. O'Reilly back in action for the Maple Leafs. Yes, sir. Of course, big time bets at the end of the episode. Yes, sir. But yeah, we got we to gotta keep on talking about these Calgary Flames over here. Uh, and to me, mm-hmm. I've got a lot to say. Uh, it's Go so off. disappointing what what has been uh, what has transpired mm. all season long and just last game. Flames lose four three against the Chicago Blackhawks the other day. A crucial no. game no. where no they can just literally bad. literally tie the Winnipeg Jets in points. At what is it, 89 points on the season? They would have a game ahead, though. Um, and that's what they have right now. They didn't win the game, mm-hmm. and they, they, you know, the Jets now have a game in hand on the Calgary Flames. They mm-hmm. play, they played yesterday Together. night again. We're, yep. we're, uh, we're recording a little bit early, so the game hasn't quite happened yet. But just what an absolute shocker, shocker <laughs> for the Calgary Flames. Like, how do you go out there? <laughs> and in this crucial time with crucial two points on the line and you mm-hmm. go lose four or three mm-hmm. to the Chicago Blackhawks. The thing is too, they haven't even played bad uh, of recently either. They're six, three and one in They've their last better, 10 games. For They've sure. been better for, over, over, uh, for recently, but mm-hmm. and they're six, three and one in their last 10 games. But again, you're two points back. You're now one game ahead of the Winnipeg Jets. You could have tied them in points still with one with one game ahead and and you let that one slip away against a very poor team that doesn't have anyone significant on their roster. They traded away Patrick Kane, they traded away Max Domi. You're going up against P- Peter Mrazek and pretty much a bunch of young young guys who are just getting a crack in the NHL. Mm-hmm. And it's it's honestly disappointing and it's unacceptable in my opinion because this Flames team on paper they're a playoff team on paper. Yeah. No question. Yeah. They are a playoff team. Mm-hmm. And the, the flames from the very beginning of last off season saw what their future was looking like. They knew that they were, they were trying to get a deal done with Johnny Goudreau. They couldn't get a deal done. They let him walk. They knew yes. Matthew Kachuk was going to do the same thing. So they had to trade him away. You make mm-hmm. a great trade and you make a great trade with the Florida Panthers. You're able to sign Huberto long-term. You sign Mackenzie Weger long-term. You're able to sign Nazem Kadri, who just won a Stanley Cup long term. And again, on paper, they have everything you could think of speed, skill, talent, strength, a strong defensive group, and what's supposed to be a top five goalie and one of the better tandems in well, the league. Well, there you go, Steele. And I think that is a very nice, if you don't mind me taking the, yeah. bat, the baton from there. And I know this is where you wanted to go next with this conversation anyway is the goaltending has let them down. And yeah. and I, you know what, though? What also has let them down is, in my opinion, decision-making from this coaching staff. Yes, it has. I don't, I don't watch as much Calgary Flames games as I would like. But when I look at some of these numbers, Steel, there you have the eighth best penalty kill in the league, right? Like, special, sometimes when I look at a team and you can't put your finger on why they're underperforming, you know me, I like to go to special teams Mm -hmm. and you know, and you'll back me up on this when it comes to winning in the postseason, And we saw it from the power play from Colorado last year, special teams make or break you in the playoffs. Yeah. If your opponent goes down, you have to smash them on the power play. And I think the power play has let them down a little bit this year, Steele, ranking only 19th best in the league. And I know that's not the be all and end all, but to me, special teams comes down to the coaching in a very big way. So I'm going to hang this on the goaltending and I'm going to hang this on some bad coaching decisions from Sutter and his staff. And very quickly, before we get to the rest of the topics we want to get to, I'll throw it back over to you because I think after the season Markstrom had last year, he's right in there as disappointing for me, especially given how decent Dan Vladar has looked in some big moments. Look, it's been a disappointing season for a lot of goalies out there. The the, the goals against average this season is way down, way down from years prior. Goals against up. You mean save percentage down. Yeah, save percentage down, goals against up. Look at me with the numbers. (laughs) You you know, you you (laughs) step in every once in an hour. Cheers. But but look, like I said, like uh, – a supposed to be a top five goalie in Jakob Markstrom. And again, one of the better tandems with Markstrom and Vladar together. And both guys have just really 
stunk up the place all season long. Mm-hmm. Even in some of those uh, games where Vladar has been given the opportunity, he hasn't lived up to the moment either. So it's just been very disappointing, again, for those two reasons, the goalies and the coaching well, staff. The coaching exactly. staff has not been great. I, you know, I made a comment to you yesterday about how they're starting Markstrom back-to-back games. Like, what's the point of that? Whoa. Start yeah. Vladar against Chicago. Let Markstrom rest against against the Winnipeg Jets in a very crucial game. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, to bring it back to a little bit of fantasy-wise or fantasy angle here, prior to the season starting, I actually said for, you know, for uh, players out there, or league owners, managers out there, to take mm-hmm. a look at Tyler Toffoli because he's his fantasy value was going to rise because of guys like Huberto and Kadri. They're able to bring that offensive ability. But instead of... Instead of them helping Toffoli, Toffoli has actually helped them. He's yeah, his, he's been beast. Toffoli's, yeah, Toffoli's value, fantasy value, actually did rise, but it wasn't mm-hmm. because of Kadri and Huberto. He just yep. went out there. He's and did doing it himself. It. He, yeah, he's led the, he, he he leads the team in points with seventy two points in seventy eight games. That's and twenty more great. points. Yeah, he, that's twenty more points than Kadri and wow. Huberto this season. Wow. So yeah, Toffoli's that can't and that guy. can't be. That just can't it, be. It can't be. You and can't again, that be goes, paying that, those guys. That all goes that money. back. That goes back to the coaching decisions of. Yeah. I know Huberto was struggling, but why the heck is he playing on the fourth line? Why the heck is he playing on the third line? Because that mm-hmm. happened for about three three weeks to four yes, weeks. Uh, you know, a few months ago. So that just can't happen. I think the I think the coaching staff is is going to have to make a change. I think they mm-hmm. uh, take a hard look at themselves, and they're going to have to pick some pieces, maybe make some moves this off season, but. It, it, it's just very sad to see the Calgary Flames let a season like this slip right through their fingers. And it slipped. It slipped. Even if yep. they make it in now, Steele, I have no confidence. I've watched too much. You know, I said I haven't watched enough Calgary Flames hockey. I've watched enough to know that this is one of the most frustrating groups to watch. Yep. What is it? They lead the league in one goal losses or one goal games that they've blown it. It's one of those ugly stats that you don't <laughs> even want to know if you're a Flames fan. And I have one more for you. Jacob Markstrom has allowed a goal on the first shot of the game. Eight. <laughs> times yeah. this year steal the first shot of the game should be a bread basket save and i'm not gonna run back the tape and mm-hmm. explain why each one of those went in but if your goaltender psychologically if you're a team that is if your goaltender is allowing one goal on the first shot every week or so i'm telling you what the boys on the bench are saying yeah. about it and it ain't pretty Speaking of which, what will be pretty is the lineup at Sheldon Keefe's disposal. Should Ryan <laughs> O'Reilly, man, that was a good segment, segue. Should Ryan O'Reilly be ready to go at 100%? And he is. He's returning to the lineup tonight against the Boston Bruins. Steele and I have a quick take about that before we get to big time bets. And you know, we got to show some love to Flower. This is Steele's Minnesota Wild podcast. After all, Steele, take us away, my friend, to the break. Let's. Get it. We're again, like Flip said, we are going to get to big time bets very, very soon. But this episode is also brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, then you need Indeed right now. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all on Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment, the moment they sponsor a job. And candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search. Indeed does the hard hiring work for you, sponsor a job, and will match you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your job description right when you post. With Indeed, you can start hiring fast and join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, so you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. 
Terms and conditions apply, cost per application, pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire, you need indeed. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We appreciate all the love, all the support you show us. Again, every single day, Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the follow button. We are going to finish off with big time bets. But real quick, two two major news pieces. or Maybe not major, or one of them major for uh, depending, one team, Depending, depending. Again, one is just a very incredible historic fact now uh, from the Minnesota Wild, Mark andre Fleury. Let's start with the Toronto Maple Leafs, though. Ryan O'Reilly back in action against the Boston Bruins. Is it? Is that right? Boston Bruins. Against- Boston Bruins, it is, baby. Right. Why Boston not bring Bruins him back against the Toronto bitter rival? Leafs. Bitter rival, but he's back in action. Uh, a couple of guys that the Leafs have been without for, mm-hmm. you know, the time being. They've, they've brought up some guys. They're getting some new guys into the lineup. Mix and matching, getting ready for the postseason. But Ryan O'Reilly is the big name that they're able to get back. Uh, before the playoffs. Ryan O'Reilly has missed the last 14 games. And as much as he had up and down success in the few games that he had in Toronto, you know, he, uh, you know, goes pointless in a couple and he goes off in a couple, like how many has he actually had with the Toronto Maple Leafs? Eight games, five Mm -hmm. points. He was brought to this roster into this franchise deal to bring a stabilizing force When things go wrong in this playoffs, and I know that's not an angle that teams usually look to fill, but we're talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs here. And when it comes to veteran stability and a guy who has a con Smythe and a cup ring in the last four or five years, Ryan O'Reilly's time to perform for this team is now. So Mm -hmm. for me, for him to miss the last 14 games, yeah, it's probably hurt some fantasy GMs. But he is a player that, in my opinion, Steele, is very valuable over this next week because you know this guy has got his eyes set on another cup run, and he wants to get back in that mix. So if you stashed him, good for you. Get him out there this week for sure. The Toronto Maple Leafs are going to be making sure that they hold down that second spot, Steele, because if they slip home ice advantage to Tampa, (laughs) you and I are going to have to go off on a couple of tangents that we don't want to. But Ryan O'Reilly, back against the Boston Bruins, I think what we've always been waiting to see is him play that third-line center and balance out one of the best up-the-middle groups in the NHL. Let's see what happens. Long-time St. Louis Blue busts his index finger on the 17th of February, back ready to go against the Boston Bruins tonight. And the Leafs will need him against the Tampa Bay Lightning, so it's great that he's back in action for the last three to four games before the playoffs. Speaking of playoffs, Mark andre Fleury makes a historic 17th straight appearance in the playoffs. Is that correct, Flip? 17 straight seasons in the postseason? 2007 to 2017 with the Pittsburgh Penguins. 2018 to 2021 with the Vegas Golden Knights. And the last two years with the Minnesota Wild. Just impressive stuff from one of the best to ever do it, Steele. Straight up and down. Yeah, one of the best to ever do it. So he's back in the playoffs with the Minnesota Wild. I have a question for you on this. Yeah, I don't know. I think I know what the question is. I don't know if it's Gustafson or if it's Flurry. I have zero idea because do they run out a mix? You know, do they run out a split? I, I could see the Wild starting starting with Flurry. You know what? Okay. Honestly, it depends. I think it really depends who they are facing in that first round, whether yes. it's Winnipeg yeah. or if it's Calgary or I don't know, whoever it is. I I think it might depend on it. Nonetheless, maybe they start with Flurry since he has that prior, again, prior 16, 17 seasons of playoff experience. And then if it's not working out, go with a guy like Gustafson. I couldn't tell you for certainty mm-hmm. right now because Gus- Gustafson has been See? great all season long flurry yeah. has kind of gone back or back and forth up and down with his yep. year so it's, it's a this little is hard why, to that. if this is if it was me gustafson's earned it in my opinion he's earned the chance i'm not to, mad with that answer too i and i so this is what i think though because i think you much rather go to the veteran a guy who's done it all before mm-hmm. 
put him in that position to be fired up aside for, you know what I mean? Like coming in and maybe saving the team a little bit aside from throwing yeah. the rookies confidence under the bus a little bit by giving flurry mm-hmm. the number one and then having to count on Gustafson to come in and potentially save the series. I think I like the scenario run the other way a little bit more, but you know what scenario I like run a little bit more when you kick off big time bets right now, because this next week and change is going to be key to stack your playoff money. Very key. Very important to make some money as well. If you don't mind, I'll just rattle all three off. You'll definitely love my lock of the night. Not sure how you're going to like the other two picks, but I'll start off with the Predators and Hurricanes under five and a half. I don't know why. I'm just feeling this to go under. If you look at the last 10 games, the trend has gone over the number in in seven out of the last 10. But for some reason, I'm feeling a tight game for the Predators and Hurricanes. So I'm going to go okay. under five and a half. I have a lot of faith in UC Soros and Frederick Anderson to kind of, you know, stick out and showcase their talents in the crease. So <laughs> Predators, Hurricanes under five and a half at plus 110. Second pick of the night. I know you're not going to like this because you're Uh-oh. betting the other way. Uh-oh. I'm actually going to take the Wild and Penguins over six and a half. Maybe I know you even, were. Maybe even over seven at plus 162 but for right Mm. now i'm sticking with wild and penguins over six and a half four out of the last five games have been over well over nine and a half nine and a half and then seven out of the last ten have been at least over seven and a half so i'm gonna stick with six and a half over in this wild penguins game for some reason whenever they play each other it gets really crooked really fast and also, Casey DeSmith and Tristan Jari have just not been great the last month. Mm, so mm-hmm. I expect this to be a little bit more of an unpredictable Wild Penguins game, and it's going to be a high-scoring one at that. And for my lock of the night, I'm going with the Avalanche on the puck line against the San Jose Sharks. That's the lock of the night. That's also my lock of the night, Steel. So if we want to keep <laughs> things very simple, the Colorado Avalanche are going to miss these opportunities. They're just not. They're too good. And I know... That the San Jose Sharks over the last little while, you know, they plopped up with a win here or two. 7-2 Arizona, 4-3 Vegas, 3-0 shutout against the Winnipeg Jets. But I see that as their last spurt. And I could see them literally losing out. We talk about a lot of teams winning out. Colorado 7-0 on their last seven on the road. 11-2 straight up in their last 13 games. And they have four wins out of their last five trips to the Shark Tank. And very quickly, how about nine out of 10 wins overall against the Sharks team? They're not Mm going to miss tonight. That's my lock of the night as well on the puck line. Getting good money too. Plus 115 steal. That's one of those scenarios that honestly, if you had a big amount of money in your account, and I don't mean big, big based on you, and you don't want to hit the parlay train, put this on the puck line at plus 115. Double or triple up your money right there, Steele, and that's where I'd like to see it done. And very quickly, my other picks. You mentioned the Carolina-Nashville game. I think that's going to be a tight one as well, one that Carolina wins. I'm starting to just fade the teams that I think are not as good. This isn't rocket science. Carolina is the better team. I know Nashville's getting great performances from Tomasino, Evangelista, uh, Cody Glass buries his old team. Novak as well. Novak, just out of nowhere. And you know who that is? David Poyle doing it again and (laughs) setting his franchise up. We don't need to talk about that. Carolina on the money line, though. They get it done for me, the better team, and the stingier defensive team. Minus 180. And I know I'm betting the other way with you on this, but you mentioned all of those over games between Minnesota and Pittsburgh. They haven't had these implications on the line. And I think you're going to actually see a desperate team from both. Because I mentioned how crucial that home ice advantage is for the Minnesota Wild. They don't want to fall out of that. I think this is a more playoff atmosphere type game than we've seen between these two in a long time. So I'm going to throw those trends out the window a little bit. And you know I love the trends. So I'm not even trying to hate on your pick. When was the last time you and I had a side bet? Because there it is, pal. (laughs) We're sprinkling a 10 on that bad boy. Give me the Minnesota Pittsburgh under six and a half. I'm teasing it up a little bit. We're getting ready for the playoffs here. It's going to be a big, big betting board between Flip and I. We love betting in the in the postseason. Thank yes, you sir. so much. Those are the locks of the night, by the way. Both of our lock of the night being the Avalanche on the puck line against the San Jose Sharks. 
Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. For your second listen, though, check out Game to Game every moment, every performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only Locked On hosts can deliver. Thank you again for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there, and we shall see you back here again tomorrow.